I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Thursday, April the 23rd, 2015. Israel celebrated its 67th birthday today. Yom HaAtzma'ut, Israeli Independence Day, began last night at the conclusion of Yom HaZikaron, Israeli Memorial Day. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu released a video greeting marking the milestone, celebrating all that the country has achieved and expressing gratitude for the Jewish state. We celebrate that the Jewish people are no longer stateless and powerless, but are once again masters of our own fate. We've built a robust and healthy democracy where freedom is sacrosanct and human rights are enshrined in our laws for all. And as is tradition on Yom HaAtzma'ut, Israel's President Reuven Rivlin and his wife Nechama hosted Independence Day celebrations, which included musical guests and the president's recognition of 120 outstanding IDF soldiers. Rivlin told the soldiers, you are the proof that though we are forced to bear arms, it does not mean we sacrifice our social, traditional, and humanitarian values. He said, on the contrary, you are testament to the fact that the IDF is outstanding, not because of its force, but because of its spirit. The attendants at the presidential ceremony also were able to enjoy the Israeli Air Force's traditional aerial show. The planes flew across the entire country, flying over Jerusalem, Tel Aviv, Beersheba, and Haifa, among other cities. And as is also a Yom HaAtzma'u tradition, Israel held its International Bible Contest in Jerusalem today. The winner was 15-year-old Eyal Yitzchak Matas, a student at the Darke Noam High School Yeshiva in Petah Tikva. This year's contest was the 52nd. Its theme was Kibbutz Galuyot the gathering of the diasporas. And Prime Minister Netanyahu, who addressed the contestants, urged those from countries outside of Israel to, quote, come back to the land of Israel, make Aliyah. He said, we are waiting for you with open arms. The International Bible Contest is organized by the Education Ministry, the IDF Education and Youth Corps, the Chief Military Rabbinate, the Jewish Agency for Israel, the Defense Ministry, and Karen Kayemet Israel. Israel's Central Bureau of Statistics put Israel's population on the eve of its 67th birthday at 8,345,000. About 6,251,000 are Jewish. The Arab population stands at just over 20% with 1,730,000. Since the last Independence Day, Israel's population grew by about 162,000 residents, a 2% rise. At the time of the establishment of the State of Israel in 1948, the population was 806,000. And looking now at some other news, Jewish American hostage Warren Weinstein is believed to have been accidentally killed during a U.S. counterterrorism operation this past January. The White House said today that they have concluded that the operation targeting an al-Qaeda compound in the border region of Afghanistan and Pakistan accidentally killed two innocent hostages. One of them, Weinstein, the other was an Italian citizen named as Giovanni Laporto. Weinstein, who was a U.S. aid worker in Pakistan, was abducted by armed men from his home in 2011. In a written statement from the office of its press secretary, the White House expressed deep regret over the deaths that they had said they had no reason to believe either hostage was present at the time of the action. The statement reads, no words can fully express our regret over this terrible tragedy. The information had been classified until now when the president directed it to be shared today, saying he takes full responsibility for these operations and that there would be an independent review to understand what happened and ensure such tragic results are not repeated. Pope Francis will bestow papal knighthood to New York City Rabbi Arthur Schneier next week. Schneier, who is a Holocaust survivor, leads Manhattan's Park East Synagogue and is the founder of the Interfaith Appeal of Conscience Foundation. He's being recognized for his work promoting peace and understanding. The ceremony will take place on Monday, April the 27th, at the official residence of the Vatican's representative to the UN, Archbishop Bernardito Auza where Schneier will formally become a Knight of the Order of St. Sylvester. Auza said the Pope is conferring the honor of the rabbi in the, quote, firm conviction that respect for fundamental human rights, including religious freedom, are indispensable values for all peoples of the world to enjoy peace, security, and shared prosperity. 
And looking now at our programming for tonight, we continue to celebrate together with Israel its 67th Independence Day. Coming up at 7, former President of Israel and former Israeli Prime Minister, Nobel Peace Laureate Shimon Peres, shares memories of his lifelong contribution to the Jewish people and the Jewish state. That's from the 92nd Street Y in New York City. At 7.30, we highlight outstanding musicians of the IDF. At 8 tonight, former Israeli Ambassador Dani Ayalon address efforts to delegitimize the state of Israel. That's from B'nai Tikva and Camera, North Brunswick, New Jersey. At 9 o'clock, Joe Abudi tells his story about being an 18-year-old member of the Palmach in 1948 in events leading up to Israel's War of Independence. At 10, the Zamir Chorale highlight Dor Hadash's moving celebration of Yom HaZikaron and Yom HaAtzma'ut aboard the USS Intrepid in New York City. And coming up right after this newscast, Tel Aviv University professor David Menashri talks about the Iran framework deal with Mark Golub on In the News. That's tonight on JBS and JBSTV.org. And that's the JBS News Update for Thursday, April the 23rd, 2015. I'm Tisha Bader. Hatsamea.